Hello. Today I'd like to share with you one of my favorite numbers recently, which is the natural logarithm of Nova Nonagent to Nongentillion. But why do I like this number? Well, numerically, it's not that special. It's a little less than 7,000. But it does have an interesting linguistic property that I enjoy quite a bit. To understand this, we need a little background on a sort of mathematical puzzle. So, suppose we have variables f and o equal 2, and u and r equal 1. Well, if we multiply these variables, we get 4. But it also looks like we're spelling the word 4. And this is satisfying, even though it was intentionally constructed that way. And we could do the same with another number. So if we add s, i, and x, then this works for 6 as well. And this may seem very simple, which is true for the case of two words, 4 and 6, but it becomes more complex when we try to add more. Suppose we also want this to work for 14. If we divide both sides by 4, then we can just cancel out the f-o-u-r, and we're left with teen being equal to 14 over 4. But if we apply the same logic to 16, then teen must equal 16 over 6, which does not equal 14 over 4. So we've arrived at a contradiction. And this means that we can't produce 4, 6, 14, and 16 with the same set of variables. We can get three of these words, but not all four. And so this leads us to the question, how many different numbers can we produce using one set? And this is a question that I covered in a previous video called Spelling Numbers with Variables, where I found a set that works in English for 547 different numbers. But since then, I've found a set that works for even more. A lot more, in fact. And you may say we can generate a set using, for example, t equal to 1,000 and all other letters equal to 1. And so this would mean that 1,000 equals itself, 1,000,000 000, equals itself, 1,000,000 000 equals itself, and so on. And we could keep adding the word thousand. And sure, that technically works, but 1,000,000 is more properly called one million, and the next is more properly a billion. So I wouldn't consider this to work. But this principle of stacking together words so that they still equal themselves is going to be very important. We just have to be more careful about how we construct it. And we will do that using Nova Nonagenta Nongentillion. But what is Nova Nonagenta Nongentillion? To answer that, let's look at some large numbers. So we have a million is 10 to the 6th, a billion is 10 to the 9th, a trillion is 10 to the 12th, and so on. And beginning with a trillion, we see a pattern that corresponds to the Latin numbers. And we can move back and forth between the Latin number and the English exponent. So if we take the Latin number to be n, then we add 1 to get n plus 1, and we multiply that by 3, then we get the exponent. For example, septillion corresponds to septem, which is 7. Add 1 to get 8, multiply by 3 to get 24, and we see that septillion is 10 to the 24. And this idea is at the core of the system created by mathematicians Conway and Guy. So given some integer n, we can use this table to create the name of that number, with the ones place in blue, the tens place in yellow, and the hundreds place in pink. For example, if n is 321, that number would be un vigente tres antillion. And using the formula from before, that's 10 to the 3n plus 1, which ends up being 10 to the 966. As another example, if n is 654, then that word would be quator quinquagentilius sesentillion, or 10 to the 1965. And now we arrive at our number. So if n is 999, then we get nova nonaginta nongentillion. And that is equal to 10 to the 3000. But you may notice this table only goes up to the hundredths place. There is no thousandths place. So what happens after 999? 
Here we use a system that's similar to the numbers themselves. So if we have the number 654321, we would name that 654,321. We break them into chunks of three. And we can do the same thing with these large numbers using an expanded system by Conway and Weschler. So if we want n to be 654321, then our word would be quator quinquagintesessente un vigin to tracentillion, which was slightly less than 10 to the 2 million. And so following this principle, we have nove nonaginta nongentillion is equal to 10 to the 3,000. And if we add another set of nove nonaginta nongente, then n is 999,999, and we get 10 to the 3 million. And if we add another set, we get 10 to the 3 billion. And if we add another set, we get 10 to the 3 trillion. So we see every time we add this set of letters, the exponent goes up by a thousand. And so this is good news for our system because we get a regular increase by adding the same set of letters. But it's bad news because we need a multiplicative increase, but this is exponential. What we would like to see is for each term of this sequence to be some k times the previous term. But what we actually see is that each term is the previous term to the thousandth power. But there's an easy fix to that. If we want to convert exponentiation to multiplication, we just use logarithms. So the natural logarithm of nove nonagent and nongentillion is equal to 3000 times ln 10. And the natural logarithm of nove nonagent to nongentillion, nove nonagent to nongentillion is 3 million ln 10. And each time we add another set of those letters, we just multiply by a thousand. So here we found a solution. And we can add that chunk of letters as many times as we want. So this essentially works for an infinite amount of numbers. And now to wrap this up, we just need to find a set of variables. Now, we want this chunk of letters to equal 3000 ln 10. We'll start off by setting all letters equal to 1. We also want this chunk to equal 1000, because every time we add this chunk of letters, we multiply by 1000. And now we notice that there is one v in this chunk, and it's the only place that a v appears. So we can set v equal to 1000. And now dividing that out, the rest of the chunk, the natural logarithm of, should equal 3 ln 10. But we notice here, there's only one u, and this is the only place a u appears. So we just set u equal to 3 ln 10. And that completes our set of variables. u is 3 ln 10, v is 1000, everything else is equal to 1, and this works for an infinite amount of numbers. Now this does rely on the acceptance of the fact that the natural logarithm of nove nonagent to nongentillion is a correct way to name this number. But I would argue that if you accept the conway weschler system, then this is more correct than calling a million one thousand thousand. And of course, we have a lot of letters equal to one, but we could change those around to get this to work for more numbers, like one, two, three, and so on. But I think that would be a waste of time because the cardinality of infinity plus a few hundred is the same as the cardinality of infinity. So we wouldn't really be improving the result. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to see the system I created to generate more typical numbers, you can follow the link in the description for the first video in this series then our word would be quator quinquagint quator quinquagins quator quinquagint assessent quator quinquagint assessent to un vigin quator quinquagint assessent to un un assessent to un then our word would be quator quinquagint assessent to un vigin to tracentillion